This is a recap of our trip to Voyagers National Park with tips and highlights. So Voyagers National Park is in the northern part of Minnesota. Probably the closest city, large city, is International Falls. And if you're coming from the cities, you're, you're going one of two ways. You can either go through Bemidji or you can go through Duluth and then head back down. And it's about four and a half hours from the cities. We were coming from Colorado. So we came in through, we stayed a night at the Badlands. We came up through Sioux Falls and then stayed just south of Fargo our next night and then um, made the journey and came all the way to Lake Capitagoma where we actually stayed. One thing I wanted to mention is that if you are coming this way from the west, you'll actually go by Atasca State Park outside of Bemidji, and this is a great place to stop. It's where the headwaters of the Mississippi River begin. So you literally can walk across the Mississippi River in just a few steps um, in ankle deep water, and it's just really cool to be able to cross it there. It was only $7 to enter the park, and we were able to park our RV there so they have overflow parking for RVs. So that's a great place to stop. Elsa, you gonna cross it? And then when you come up here to Voyagers, your options for places to stay, International Falls is a larger city. And then there's all along this kind of coast side of the park, this area all has um, hotels and houses and RV campsites and stuff like that. When it comes to actually in the park, these islands are just natural islands. There's one hotel, the Kettle Falls Hotel, which is a historic hotel um, that's part of the park. That isn't open this year because of COVID, but most years it is, and it has limited spaces for people to stay. And then throughout the park, there's camping sites. The campsite is booked through the NPS system, and then you have a little area for a campfire. You can bring your own wood or you can use downed wood. You don't um, cut the wood obviously there. You just use what's already down or bring it with you. They have a little privy, which is basically a seat. It's not quite a full outhouse because there's no house. There's just a seat to it. So they have a privy that you can use and then um, a flat space where you can pop your tent. So you can camp within the park. We were in our RV, so we instead decided to glamp at the park. And we did that right here outside of the visitor center at a place called the Pines at Lake Capitagoma. And I have a whole review on our stay there at that RV park. They also have cabins there if you don't have an RV with you um, and you can rent one of those cabins. So again though, there's places to stay by Rainy Lake, by Lake Capitagoma or by Ash River. So any of those places will give you options on where to stay. So as I mentioned, we stayed at Lake Capitagoma and we really enjoyed our campsite. We have a whole review on that. It gave us great access to the water and be able to just launch our kayak right from the dock there and get out and be on the water. So our first night there, we enjoyed coming out on the kayak and we bought the girls some squirt guns before the trip thinking that would be a good idea. And those turned out to be a blast. So I highly recommend that little, you know, seven, $8 toy because that'll really make their day and they had a lot of fun with that. We have a Sea Eagle 420 kayak and that's really stable and nice. There was a little bit of um, more waves and stuff than we really expected. I think if you were in the wrong type of canoe it might be a bit tippy just because there is a lot of boat traffic so you end up having a little bit rougher water than I originally expected. We decided to do a boat rental for one of the days. We actually had two days booked and decided one was sufficient. And we were able to get that boat rental from the company where we were staying. So the campground where we were staying, but there's other options in town. We paid about $250 for the day and then you pay for gas. So um, whatever you end up doing and using while you're out on your sites, but you really do need a boat because there are so many sites that you're just not going to have the stamina to kayak to. I, per, I mean, maybe perhaps you will, but we definitely didn't with kids. For example, this is the dock for the Ellsworth Rock Garden. And you can see there's a bunch of boats here, but I didn't see any canoes or kayaks just because it was a bit of a distance from where anybody could have been staying. Beautiful. The Ellsworth Rock Garden is really cool to see. 
Um, Ellsworth was a gentleman who was an architect, and he built these rock gardens when he lived here. His cabin is not standing anymore, but all the rock gardens are still in place, and you can really walk around and enjoy it. And there's some different hiking trails that you can explore from this small island. One of the rock sculptures is actually an arrowhead, so it's almost kind of like the NPS rock. After heading to the rock garden, we went over to the Lake Capitagoma Visitor Center from the uh, water side. And you can see here where some of the canoes and kayaks and stuff go on the dock. The visitor center was out there in the distance. And then there's a boat launch that's here as well. And you can park and leave your car. And you can see our pontoon is right over there. There are three main visitor centers, Ash River, Lake Cabotagoma, and then Rainy Lake, but none of them were open because of COVID. The rangers did have some junior ranger packets and other information that was available outside of the rangers area. And we saw some rangers walking around. So if you had questions, you could ask people. They didn't really have anybody though stationed at one of the visitor centers outside talking to people or, or doing any ranger programs. After lunch and a refuel, we headed out to the Ash River area, and this is a stretch called the Narrows, where it gets a little bit more narrow and a little less deep, but it's a good stretch, and it was totally safe, and we went out this way, and you can actually connect to Namakin Lake from here as well, but we decided that um, the depth was getting a little bit low, and we didn't want to go that far, so you can connect to one of the other lakes from here. So we then headed the north and started going towards Kettle Falls, but decided some of the depths were pretty right low. There. And because we couldn't go in Canadian water, which is right there, you're looking at that in the distance to the south, is actually the Canadian water. A little bit more space there, but the U.S. water is pretty slim as you're heading towards Kettle Falls, and we didn't want to damage the prop on the boat. So we decided this was as far as we would go, and we headed back to the resort. Another evening of kayaking. I highly recommend getting a wetsuit. It's so cold here in the winter that the lakes freeze so thoroughly that you can actually drive a car onto these lakes and snowmobiles. So you can imagine that even in the heat of the summer, like when we were there at the end of July, it was still really cold water. So we were really glad that we had the wetsuits, wet socks and water shoes. Sailing on Lake Tacoma. Actually kayaking, technically. Jeremy's doing all the work though. The girls are just sitting here. Jill's just sitting here, trying to warm up. I'm filming, but I was working. There's the gorgeous view. The next day we headed into International Falls on our way to Rainy Lake and you can check out Smoky Bear Park where there's a giant Smoky the Bear statue that you can have your picture taken in front of, which was really cute. He's actually wearing a mask right now because of COVID. The next town over, you can also take your picture with a giant voyageur. These are the people that the park is named after. They are the travelers, the men who would canoe for 16 to 18 hours a day, carrying beaver pelts across Canada and out to the St. Lawrence River to get them out to Europeans. Voyageurs is also the location of some of the oldest rocks on the planet at 3 billion years old. So Rainy Lake is the most northwest lake in the park, and it's the one by International Falls. You can see here where the canoe kayak launch is at, and we were able to get a parking spot right by it. We could blow up the kayaks. There's some bathrooms right there. And then right here in the distance, you can see where the boat launch is at. And there's lots of parking and the visitor center, which was not open, of course. We were able to kayak over to our own private island and the girls could get out and play. It definitely came in handy to have all those wetsuits. I'll put a link down to their stuff and our stuff below. We were able to sit here and we brought our own picnic lunch and we could eat our lunch and then take that with us. So it was really nice to just be able to go and be away from other people and kayak out to the places where you want to explore. We then kayaked across the lake and ha headed to this dock where we could hike. Park the kayak out to Black Bay Beaver Pond Trail. This 
see if we can see any beaver. We didn't see any beaver, but did see some river otters and then headed over here to Rainy Lake City. This area had some old abandoned buildings, which was pretty cool to see. You could even walk inside them. Here's a bit more video of kayaking by the islands. It's really nice to have the kayak because you can get really up close and personal to the islands, which is hard to do safely in a boat. And it's just peaceful being out there in the water, listening to the water lap against the kayak. Um, in this particular video, the kids are arguing. So I paused out uh, the audio for you guys and I'm just doing an audio track layover, but um, it was generally pretty enjoyable. And the whole trip was beautiful being able to kayak in the waters and explore this park. I highly suggest having some sort of watercraft. A boat is going to help you see a bunch of those other sites. But even just having a kayak or canoe and even just renting one will let you get out there and explore the park and just see why it's a peaceful, wonderful place to visit. We were here in the height of the summer and I highly suggest that. Came across some white-tailed deer, which is different than the mule deer we have out in Colorado. That was neat to see. We did see river otters. We saw a beaver dam and then a moose at one point. We could see the loons in the water, but anytime we tried to get near them, they would fly away. So the best way to hear them was at night. So we would take our mosquito net hats and head down by the water because at night is really when the bugs came out. And we would just sit there and listen and then you could start hearing the loons calling, which was really cool to hear. And we had a beautiful view here from the place where we were camping. But like I said, I highly recommend bringing having long sleeve shirts and pants and having the mosquito netting even with all of that and bug spray we still ended up having multiple bites nobody had any ticks but we did have multiple bites this night greta decided to go swimming in the lake and actually found a leech a really big leech that she brought up to us so i'll show you a little bit of video about what the leeches look like up here up on their mouth and they suck on your skin and then they give you like a hickey there. They suck the blood out and they're very hard to get off. So once they get on your skin, they, you can't hardly get them off. Hold on, that guy is as big. I mean, he is almost as big as my hand. Huge. Was he I, on you or you mm -mm. just found him? He was swimming in the water. I thought I was seaweed first. So I'm swimming next, right next to it. It's coming towards me, and I'm like, why is that seaweed coming towards me? And you so, know, you, you can hook that sucker. Can you hold them still? So my grandpa and I used to catch leeches like that, and then would hook it, hook their mouth like that, and then you can use that as bait. And the, and the walleye will come right up and suck that sucker right down. The Should what? I release it or kill it? No, you no, don't I'd want to kill him. You don't need to kill him. We don't ever but need to kill anything. I wouldn't go back in the and after that gross note, I'll leave you with this high note, which is a time lapse of the beautiful sunset here at Voyagers National Park. I hope you enjoyed this video and it provided some helpful information for planning your trip to Voyagers. We have other videos on other national parks and places we have been to. The RV Homeschool podcast talks about national parks, and you can find us on Facebook and Instagram at RV Homeschool. Thanks for watching and I wish you safe travels.